Good Thursday morning of the uh, third week of Easter. But for, right now, for me, actually, it is Thursday afternoon. I just got done with classes this morning. So if I look disheveled, it's because the kids were rough. No, they weren't. They were wonderful. <laughs> they were delightful. No, I'm just kidding on that score. It's in the middle of the afternoon. It's 2 o'clock right now. And I was looking a couple of times. The texts are a little trickier today. I just had a little trouble focusing. But it's the last part of John's gospel of today's reading that I found. I, I was just share a thought with you, whatever it may be worth you. It said, um, it's, it's John at his best. He says, no one can come to me. He's talking to the crowds. No one can come to me unless the Father who sent me draw him. That's the doctrine of grace. You see that? No one can come to me unless the Father draw him, and I will raise him on the last day. It is written in the prophets, they shall all be taught by God. That's an old, old tradition in Christianity, that faith is, is due to the intervention of God himself, the Holy Spirit. It, it, it is a, we don't make it up. We are, as it were, partners of God in the, in the realization of faith, the coming degree of faith. It's a gift. Faith is a gift. I guess I didn't say that right, but if you know what I mean by they shall all be taught by God, you see. Everyone who listens to my Father and learns from him comes to me. Not that anyone has seen the Father except the one who is from God. He's referring to himself, of course. He, he has seen the Father. Amen, amen, I say to you, whoever believes has eternal life. That's the, the radical transformation of Christianity. It doesn't promise you the good life now. It promises you eternal life. Okay? And it's personal. See? Yeah. And then he goes one step further. Do you see he's the new Moses? Watch this. I am the bread of life. Your ancestors ate the manna in the desert, but they died. That's, of course, the story of Exodus. This is the bread that comes down from heaven, so that one may eat it and not die. Talking about the Eucharist, you see? I am the living bread that came down from heaven. Whoever eats this bread will live forever, and the bread that I will give is my flesh for the life of the world. That's the Eucharist. See? That eating the bread of, in the desert of life, in the exodus of life that we live, the bread that we eat is Christ himself, the Eucharist. See? As the Jews had manna in the desert, we have Christ in the desert. See? And in having Christ, we have not just temporal life and place, time and place, we have eternal. We have eternal. It seems to me that you got to be a little bit old for this one. Not uh, Yes, you have to be a little old to appreciate that, uh, to appreciate the notion of eternal life. Because when you get old, you hear the clock, it's two o'clock, you see. You know the fleetingness of time when you get old. You hear old folks, where did it all go? <laughs> you know, when you think back, gee, that was 30 years ago I did this. That was 40 years ago I did this. See? You hear people complain, and I'm one of them. I can't remember what I did yesterday, but I can tell you what I did 14 years ago or 50 years ago. And you find yourself yearning for the people of your past, some still alive and some who are dead. And a classmate, I think it was a colleague, no, colleague asked me, I told you this before, when you think of eternity, what do you think of? And I think being with my family again and my friends, those I have loved and been loved by, they're all dead now. See, I want to be together with those whom I have loved, you see? That's, when you're young, you don't think in those terms. You think of right now because your friends, your beloveds are alive with you. But as each of them passes, the, and you are more and more alone in life, as you age more and more in life, and you bury the people that are intimate to you personally and in your narrative, 
you begin to yearn for the eternal life. Not alone, but eternal life with those who you have loved and been loved by. And so I told you, when the person asked me, it was my colleagues, what I saw heaven, I said, being with my family again, those I have loved and been loved by. It's exactly the case. It's exactly true. And I told you what my Aunt Jenna said to me 50 years ago, roughly 50 years. It was 50 years, in 1973. She said, We will see each other again in paradise. What a beautiful sentiment. See how the faith runs so deep within the Italian culture. Really, it is. I'm not blowing the whistle for the Italians. But it, well, my aunt was simply a woman of faith, of course. But she, my aunt was saying to me, we won't see each other again. But I want to see you again. So I will see you in eternity. Ci vediamo in paradiso. We will see each other again in paradise. That's a beautiful thought. It's a consoling thought. I think about seeing my family again. Those I have loved, my friend June, I want to be with them again. You see? That's the beauty of the Christian hope. It's the resurrection of the dead, that we will always be alive and together again. For those of you who are listening to this are old, old like I'm old, 83 years old, you know that your life is basically over, mostly over. Though you have the refreshment of the present moment and the hopes of tomorrow, you don't have the hopes of a long future. You don't look far ahead. You look far back. And you remember with hope that the people of your past, the people of your narrative, the persons of your hope in life, hope and in life, will be together in eternity, that we'll, you will be together again in, 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 in paradise. I love that line, Ci vediamo in paradiso. We will see each other again in paradise. What a beautiful way to say to goodbye someone. Ci vediamo in paradiso. We will see each other again in paradise. It's funny because, not funny laughing, but it's interesting. When I go to the cemetery, those are extremely intimate moments for me. If it's my parents' grave, it could be my friends. And I visit with them. I don't hear anything back like a conversation. I'm not going to say that. It's not true. But I look with loving remembrance. I look, and when I'm home in Connecticut, I go to my family's graveside, I see my father and mother, my grandparents, my Uncle Joe. See, I look with remembrance and love and anticipation. We will see each other again in paradise. I'm sorry when people, like my friend June, she, she donated her body to, uh, to the university, you know, the med school. And I understand the generosity of that, but it, in a way it deprives the living, the survivors from a for a place. I mean, I'm when I'm home, I go to a place, the cemetery, and I go right there and stand in front of my parents' gravesite. And I miss that here. In fact, many of my friends here donate their body. I don't have any idea where they where they are buried. If they're, in other words, many of my friends here have donated their bodies, and that's noble. That's a good thing. But from my point of view, it leaves me a little bit without a presence. That is a place, a place to remember, to stand to remember. Isn't that something? I don't know. It must be in the custom of my family because we always visited the gravesite. When I'm in Italy, I always go to the gravesite of my aunts and uncles and grandparents, always. And I remember. But I remember with gratitude, love, and hope. Ci vediamo. We'll see each other in paradiso, in paradise, in which there is no more death, no more loss, no more emptiness, only the richness of life itself. That's the hope you get in the text here. I am the living bread that came down from heaven. Whoever eats this bread will live forever. And the bread that I will give is the, my flesh in the life of, for the life of the world. The Eucharist the food of eternity. When I receive communion every day when I say Mass, it is in the profound belief that I am eating the flesh of God and the hope and belief that one day in the divine flesh, in Christ, we will be together again and we will 
see each other again forevermore in paradise.